Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2 Design. Last week, I published an animation of Kalinga, the crag queens from the game Noara The Conspiracy. And it met quite a lot of success and I received a lot of supporting words from you, the community, but also from amazing artists I really look up to. So thank you for that. In this video, I will break down the animation process and give you some tips and tricks. I'm not used to ask this, but if you're enjoying my content, please give it a like and drop a comment. That will really help me growing the channel. Without further ado, let's get started with the video. Before we start this tutorial, I'd just like to promote CG Boost's new update for their Blender sculpting course. With this course, you'll learn how to sculpt and texture a creature in Blender from scratch. This new chapter is all about texturing in Blender, including retopology, UV maps creation, baking, painting, and shading. As usual with Zach, you can expect high quality educational content with the best editing. Check out the link in the description. Back to the tutorial now. As this is something that is often asked, and even if it's hard to tell, as I'm multitasking a lot for the studio, I believe this animation took me about 15 hours of work to be done. Before I get started, I checked the information from the game designers. This is a 4-hit combo animation. The first hit needs to occur after half a second, and the next hit needs to be achieved within half a second. Basically, the first hit will occur at frame 15, and next hit will occur every 5 frames. Before I start blocking my animation, I need to consider the background of the character. She's the queen, and one of the reasons we created this crown shape with her blades. Also, she comes from the ocean and hates the ground. That's why most of the time she doesn't put a foot on the ground. Since her design is terribly complex, the biggest challenge animating her is about clarity and readability. For all our characters in Nora, and especially for her, I have a specific layout. It features different top-down point of view. This way I can check if the animation reads well from the game's point of view. We always start our animation from the idle pose. Then I need to build a clear anticipation. This will allow the opponent to understand that he's going to be attacked, and he may react. Indeed, while Noara is a turn-based game, you can play during your opponent's turn and use defensive skill. This is why it's super important to show a big anticipation. By the way, you can play Noara for free. Check it out on our Steam page. Everything in this pose is shaped so that we do understand that she's going to attack. All the blades are targeting the opponents, and she's pulling back in a C-shape to gather energy. From there I will build all the contacting poses or striking poses, because they are the most important poses in the action, also known as key poses. At this stage I don't care about the timing, and I build all the poses every 5 frames. I craft the poses bone by bone, so I start with the center of gravity which is positioned on the head of the character, not on the hips. This is very specific to this character since all the tentacles came from the head. I shape the tentacles holding the blades using simple forward kinematics controllers. The leg tentacles features an inverse kinematic mechanism and I added tweaker bones that allowed me to reshape those tentacles. Learn to create those rigs in this video. My main concern for those four poses was to make sure that we had a good directionality and eventually create a triangular shape with each poses. One of the big deal was also to figure out how the tentacles will fold back. They are very straight whenever they are striking, but when they are coming back, I wanted to create an S-shaped curve, a bit like a whip. The poses shown here are the one polished but they are very close to the original blocked poses I did during the blocking stage. You can spot them in the action editor as I key all my controllers whenever I'm blocking my character. One mandatory feature of the character rigs was to be able to hide any feature of the character. Learn how to do it in this video. This allowed me to focus on our human body posing, and I was definitely aiming at some storm poses from the X-Men. The fact that she's kind of floating thanks to her leg tentacles, the incredible strength of these poses, and my goal to have her commanding her tentacles was a perfect fit. We start with this very royal pose, then the anticipation pose, 
Then I got through some kind of Superman pose, the one that actually made me think of Storm. And here is the extreme of the same pose or the overshoot. And then she will swing with the opposite arm to throw the other tentacles. To finally get into her subtle pose and then transition back into idle. One of the body mechanics I'm proud of is the dynamic counterweight she's trying to achieve by kicking back with her left leg, to then be able to swing the opposite direction. A big deal with this animation is to get from the blocking stage, which is pretty conventional, to something more polished. I started, as usual, working on the center of gravity of my character. In this case, the head root controller. I always polish the location curve, then work on the rotation curve, and then I go down the hierarchy, polishing the hips, the legs, the shoulders, and the arms. Remember that the main timing of the animation was set by the game design, so I knew when she was supposed to strike. Polishing the body was pretty straightforward. And you can learn all my animation techniques and methods in my live course available on p2designacademy.com. To polish the animation of the tentacle, I work on them one by one. To do so, I hide all the tentacle but the one I'm working on, because it will be too confusing to work on all the tentacles at the same time. Also, the tentacle's composition was done when I built the key poses. The first motion to achieve is the unfold of the tentacle into the anticipation pose. For all the animation of this character, I worked a lot on the shape of the blades. But this is something I did at the very end, so I will lock them so that we can focus on the tentacle motion and how I track it. For the first motion, everything is about the tip of the blade. I will select the very last bone on the blade and then I will calculate its motion path. I'm using a quick favorite with the Q key. From there, I will work frame by frame, making sure that I get a nice arc with a nice spacing. Here we can clearly see the blade accelerating with the spacing getting bigger and bigger. And then it will slow down or ease out toward the anticipation pose. Here you can see the different key poses that were built before I switched to spline. I started to figure how the tentacles would unfold, then almost reach the anticipation pose, and finally the anticipation pose. Here I just got rid of the different keyframe for demonstration purpose and just kept the key poses. My workflow is pretty simple. I scrub through the timeline and whenever I spot a weird shape for the tentacle, I simply totally reshape it using the different controllers on the current frame. From there, I will scrub again in this portion of the animation and see if I can spot any other weird shape of the tentacle. Once I'm done cleaning those shapes, I will focus on the arcs made by the tip of the blade. I will tweak the main controllers, but mainly work on the controllers that are very close to the handle of the blade, as if it was some kind of wrist. And I will make sure that my arcs are perfectly defined and my spacing is relevant as shown in the beginning. After the strike, when the tentacles were getting back, I would also track the tip of the tentacle, and the joint in the middle of it. Note that you can change the color of the motion path in the motion path option. This is very handy whenever you have multiple motion paths at the same time. Then it was exactly the same as when I was unfolding the tentacles. I will first focus on the shape and see if there was any glitches. Once done, it's all about arcs and spacing. Another technique or tip I developed while working on this character was the use of the grease pencil annotation. I would simply draw the flow of the tentacle on the screen holding the D key, and then in the annotation menu, I would lock this drawing so that you can scrub through your animation and keep the drawing on screen. And I will then frame by frame shape the tentacle so that it follows the drawing. The leg tentacles animation was a little more simple, and also they are not as critical as the upper tentacles. You can clearly see the acceleration as she stepped forward, then it stabilized and then go backward. There's quite a lot of easing in and out because the tentacle is sliding on the ground. It's not a real step. Then I used those tweakers to make sure that I had a nice flow in the tentacles, meaning that I don't have any jittery motion. 
I just track the arc and make sure that the arcs were very smooth. I did a bit of overshoot, a bit of shaking so that it looks more lively. And I try to align as much as possible her center of gravity beneath those tentacles. I tweak the blade using straightforward animation, bending them and scaling them up. My goal was to create smears to support their rotation. I also use straightforward animation for hair tentacles, for the chest, for the clothes and the fingers. Even if we don't see them that much, I love working on the hands. They can bring so much to a character, they are very expressive and they naturally draw the attention. So you should be extra careful with them. This is the end of this video. Don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed it. That really helps supporting the channel and I'll see you very very soon.